So that's the other side. It should be by symmetry, it's got to be the same thing. It should be 50%. Now comes a little bit of a trick question. How many people weigh exactly 140 pounds? Now, these three categories, less than, greater than, or equal, should, should basically exhaust all the possibilities. You should add up to 100%. And therefore, it should be 100%. So how much got to the sum got to be 1? What does this piece have to be? It has to be 0. Now, why is it true? I used to weigh 140 pounds, no more, but I used to weigh. So why is the chance of somebody weighing 140 pounds 0%? There's a little bit of a paradox. I'm playing mathematically, we just proved it's 0%. But the fact is, there are many people who weigh 140 pounds. How do you reconcile those two seemingly opposite ideas called the paradox? Yes? Like greater than or equal to like no, no, I'm how many people weigh strictly less than 140? Yes? By ounces. What? By ounces. Let me elaborate. I think your answer is the following. No, no, no. When I, when I say I weigh 140 pounds, did I weigh exactly 140.00000000? No, I probably weigh 140 pounds in 3 ounces, or 139 pounds in 12 ounces. My scale said 140 pounds. But if I say mathematically x equals 140, I mean 140 point zero 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 zero, not just you know 10,000 zeros. Is there anybody in the entire world that weighs 140 to 10,000, meaning to the exact molecule? Is it possible somebody? Well, yeah, it's possible, but the chance is one in 10 trillion trillion trillion. Okay, so that's why. So this chance is zero doesn't contradict the fact that I actually weighed 140 pounds. When I say I weighed 140 pounds, I don't mean 140 exactly. I meant around 140. So I just want to point out that. So the bottom line is that when everybody, when in this particular chapter, if I would say, what's the chance of somebody weighing exactly any particular number? The answer you simply put down is zero. Because it's impossible somebody weighs exactly that particular number. Or another way of saying it, that curve is so skinny at that point, there's no, there's no probability to it. Um, even though it's not impossible, which is another paradox. It's not impossible. Um, on the other hand, in chapter 5, when we talked about flipping coins, what's the chance of getting exactly three heads? Is that zero? No, it's 10%, 12%, 90%, but it's not going to be zero. So we're dealing with discrete random variables, whether it's zero, or one, or two, or three, or four. Any particular number has a, a substantial probability. On the other hand, we're dealing with continuous random variables, which is, again, the name of this chapter, continuous, where this, each number really has a whole range of values. And, nothing, and everything in the middle, included any millions and trillions of uh, data points uh, along the number line, then the probability of any particular point will, in fact, be zero. It's just, it's just a technicality that won't really have an impact on it. So the point is, if I put down this question, I'm sorry, I forgot your name in the back again? Rafael. Rafael. If I put down less than, I think, I'm not sorry, that wasn't your, just somebody else's answer, less than or equal, um, and the answer was, the answer would still be 50%. In other words, including the people who are exactly 140 doesn't really change the probability. If I said greater than or equal, it doesn't change the probability, because nobody weighs exactly 140.0000. Okay, having said that, I should add on one point. So the average will go right in the middle. So the average equals 140 to be placed literally in the middle, which makes a lot of sense. What about the spread? I told you the spread is equal to sigma. It would be nice if we could change this into a geometric picture. Where is sigma going to be represented? Is sigma the size of the interval? No, the size of the interval of each box would be whatever you want, 10 or 1 pound or a tenth of a pound. Where would you place sigma? Would you place it this way, vertically, or horizontally? Where you, what might make the most sense to place sigma? Vertically or horizontally? Laura? The answer is it's the spread of the number, so it makes a lot of sense to so Laura. Anybody else who just answered something who, who had the name out that I ignored by any, by any chance? Um, so the sigma is the spread. In fact, where are we going to spread from? Well, starting in the middle, it's going to be a horizontal line. Sigma equals 15. So it's very hard to see it here, but it's much easier to see it on the, on the, the official bell-shaped curve. So the bell-shaped curve, which we can still call x equals male weight, that's still our population. The middle value will be, remember, it's just taking this picture and just sort of making skinny boxes, 140. But the sigma will be roughly around the vertical line equal to 15. Now, where do you put this line? Well, if you put it about a third of the way down, you'd be OK. But if you're one of those who are more mathematically advanced or curious, this curve goes called concave down. And this starts shifting direction to concave up. And where it switches is called a point of inflection. So the mathematics of this is that you put this line at the point of inflection. It turns out to be around a third of the way down. 
So now let's answer the question, how many people weigh less than 140? Well, if from here to here is 100% of the area, and the two sides are symmetric, and, it, and the number of people below 140 corresponds to the area, we'll make all those assumptions, which are, which are facts, then half the area is below 140, and half the area is above 140. So the answer to the question is 140. Let's take it now one step further. How many people weigh between 140 and 155? That's the question we're going to focus on almost the rest of the day. 140 to 155. OK. Um, yes? 34%. Say again? 34%. OK, but that, that's too exact. I'm sorry, you, you, had, you, you had this once before? You had this once before? Kind of, yeah. Okay, I, I want to make, I, I appreciate the answer, and I'm happy you remember it, but in fact, but anybody who, well, let's try again. Well, you sort of gave away the, the, the trick. <laughs> okay, we want the people away between 140 to 155. That's the question we're gonna focus on literally the next five or 10 minutes. But where is 155? Well, if you go 140, this is 15 pounds, we can might as well take use of that information, bring the 15 down here, so by parallel lines, 155, which is 15 pounds above 140, is right over here. So if I, the question, how, what's the probability, what percentage of the population is between those two limits, that literally boils down to the area, because we don't really have the individual boxes to add up. We're just going to do it by the area, which is a, approximate, which is basically the same thing. And if you realize from here to here is 50%, what chunk is over here? Now, when I ask the class, people start saying 25% is the first guess I usually get. Well, it can't be 25, because this is 25, it's got to be 25, and this is much bigger than that. So then people say, okay, maybe 30 and 20. And they look at this, now, nah, 35 and 15. So I get most people finally say 35 and 15 is a really common sense of a guess of my picture is somewhat to scale. But then people say, well, let's say, then I say, well, the truth of the matter is when we learn the exact method, because we're not going to do it by guessing, it turns out it's as, I'm sorry, I keep finna, Raphael. Raphael said 34%. That's the number that's worth remembering. That. Now, why is it worth memorizing it? Because in every example, no matter what you start with, no, no, no matter what this number is, if you take, if you start at the middle, and you go a full standard deviation, go across exactly one standard deviation, that will always be 34%. And this will always be, of course, the missing 16%. Having said that, let's try to answer a couple of related questions. What's the probability somebody weighs between 140 and one? 25. Well, first let's look at where is 125. Well, if you go 140 minus 15, 140 minus 10 is 130. So if you go a full standard deviation to the left, 125 should be an equal distance on the other side. Like doing these numbers right? Yeah. And so what is this chunk? Yes. 34%. By symmetry, it got to be the same 34%. So this is you know, it's images. So the answer to the question is 34%. And if I would ask you how many people weigh less than 125? Somebody else answer? Yes, 16%. 16%. Just catch up with my uh, images. Steve Johnson, pass it back to I think Anthony. Okay. So and finally, how many people weigh between 125? And 155. Uh, the answer is just some this plus this is 64 plus 34 is 68%. And they're additive, these are simply areas. Now you can't have a negative area. couple of minutes, let's move on to what I'm going to be showing you on Friday. So it turns out my calculation was wrong about the time of the test. It's going to be Friday. We're going to finish Chapter 6. The following Monday, we're going to have a review. And the following Wednesday, we're going to have the test online. So we're, we're talking about a, a week from today, which is good. I always like to give you a, week, a, a week's announcement before the test. So you should be catching up with those all the online homeworks, etc. Now, I haven't posted the examples in Chapter 6 yet. I will do that hopefully today to do this online. Yes? Five and six. Yeah. Do a second. Okay. Now, 
The question we're going to try to talk about right now is so should I erase let me erase this. I can erase this. This is not that relevant. This is just enough. this is like the foundation of it, but it's, you're going to be dealing with this picture all the time. Let me change the question right now to P of X between 140 and not 155 but 156. Anybody want to give me take a take a take a shot at that? Again, there's no exact answer. Don't expect some magical formula. I'm expecting you to know. How much between 140 and 156? The point is, I don't expect you to get the exact answer from here. If one, one, so the first thing is to make a picture. Where is 156? Well, if this is 140, this is 155, 156 is 115. Remember, 1, 1, 1, 1, 115 of these. So 156 is just another unit over. So 156 got to be a little bit to the right of this. And now the area just gets slightly bigger. And if the old area was 34%, what do you think the new area is going to be? 49, no, maybe 36 or 37 or 38, but yeah, I'd say 37, just to get, yeah, something like 37. So my guess is, I'll put a little dot in your guess, 37%. What we're going to learn about in the first five or 10 minutes of the lecture on Friday is how to get the exact answer. How do you get the exact answer? There's a table found in the back of the book. You look up the numbers in the table and, all this, and you finish it. But since we have a couple of minutes, let me point out to you, uh, should we, we have time to take or? Okay. Since um, 